First World War, roughly two and a half million Polish immigrants arrived here in the U.S. and many of them moved to Pennsylvania to work in the state's booming coal and steel industries. In fact, by 1920, a third of the workforce in Pittsburgh were Polish Americans. So it's no surprise that Pittsburgh is known for their Polish food, including kielbasa, bagels, and pierogi, those little dumplings filled with potatoes. And that's what Brian is going to show us how to make today. Now, Brian, you actually went to Pittsburgh to learn how to do it right. Right. I learned how to eat a ton of pierogi is what <laughs> I learned. So we spent time with restaurateurs, with home cooks, and we learned how to make pierogies. I learned that there's many different types. There's those that are filled with jalapenos and bacon what? and sauerkraut and dried prunes with all manner of things. But the basic recipe we're going to make today is cheddar cheese and potato. Mm. And so we're going to start with the potatoes. So I have one pound of russet potatoes. Now why are you choosing russets over any other kind of potato? Because russets will give us a lighter, fluffier texture. And we'll slice the potato in half inch thick slices. And that's a good idea whenever you're cooking potatoes, take mashed potatoes or what have you, to cut them into slices rather than cubes because they'll cook through more evenly. We'll combine all the potatoes in the pot with a tablespoon of salt. And we'll cover that with water by about one inch. We'll bring this to a boil, and once that comes to a boil, we'll reduce the heat to medium, and we'll cook it at a strong simmer until the potatoes are very tender. Okay, Julia, so the potatoes have been boiling for 15 minutes, and we can take a peek and see that they're fully tender. We'll just go over here and drain these off. Okay, now we can drop the potatoes straight into the stand mixer. So these are still really hot. Yeah, and that's an important thing here, because we're going to combine them with the cheddar cheese and the butter, and you want to make sure they're hot so they fully incorporate and melt both those items. So one cup of sharp cheddar cheese, two tablespoons of butter, a half teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of pepper. So we're going to mix this for about one minute until it's fully melted. Okay. That smells good. Right. We want to chill this while we make the dough. The quickest way to do that is to put it in a nice shallow dish like this eight inch square baking pan. We're going to drop this in the refrigerator and let it chill for at least 30 minutes or up there a full 24 hours. So while the filling chills, we're going to turn our attention to the dough. This wonderful woman named Elaine Kitlowski in Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania, took us into her home for a day and taught us how to make pierogies based on her grandmother's recipe. Now she uses a combination of all-purpose and semolina flours, which makes it a relatively high protein dough, so it's nice and elastic. Rather than call for two different types of flours, we settled on bread flour. Which has a higher protein content than all-purpose flour. Right. So we have two and a half cups of bread flour here. We're going to add one teaspoon of baking powder one half teaspoon of salt. We'll just whisk this together to combine it. Then we can go ahead and add one cup of sour cream. This is a pretty interesting dough. Right, we're adding fat and richness without adding too much moisture to it. So you'll find when we're done mixing this up that the dough is extremely easy to work with. If you have favorite doughs in life, <laughs> which I never thought I'd say, this is gonna be one of my favorite doughs. Really, this is yeah. your favorite dough, all right. Favorite dough, I don't know what else to do with it besides make pierogies, but that's a good start. So I have one whole egg and one egg yolk. We're gonna fit the mixture with a dough hook, and we'll mix this on medium high speed for about eight minutes until the dough really hydrates and it gets nice and elastic. Okay, Julia, the dough has been rested for at least 20 minutes here. You can see how nice and I gotta touch it. Yeah, it's Ooh. nice and pliable, isn't it? That's gonna be a good dough to work with. So we're ready to roll this out. We wanna start with a little bit of bench flour. You don't wanna over flour this board because the pierogies are gonna seal without the aid of water. So too much flour prevents the seal from happening. We wanna start off by rolling this into an 18 inch circle. And that just gives you the best thinness for the dough. Right, it comes out to be about an eighth of an inch thick. So we have a three inch biscuit cutter. We're gonna go around and cut out as many rounds as possible. We have about enough filling for 30 pierogi. Okay, so we're now ready to start adding the filling. We're gonna use one level tablespoon measure. See that the filling is nicely chilled, and we'll just kind of slide that into each pierogi. This looks like it takes a lot of patience to make these. It does. This is a little something we like to call pierogatory in the kitchen, because <laughs> you're staring down the barrel of 24 pierogies that you now have to fold and crimp <laughs> and make look perfect. Why don't we start folding them? Okay, All right. I'm gonna teach you All right. the way I was taught and give it a simple fold right in the middle and kind of just give it a little pinch. Then work over sliding to the left. And then I like to come around from one end and just give it a, a solid pinch. And this, in lieu of the water, is what really makes it stick together. Okay, and we can just place them onto a lightly floured sheet of parchment. You know, if you don't get a perfect seal on them and they break apart yeah. in the boiling water, those are called angels. Oh no! Yeah, it's an adorable name for them. But it's an adorable they, name for a mistake. Yeah. 
<laughs> I got the feeling I'm making some angels over here. <laughs> I'm an angel maker. See, it doesn't even sound bad. No, it doesn't. <laughs> another few minutes for this batch. We'll roll out the second batch of dough and hopefully get another six cut and we're ready to boil them off. Okay, Julia, we got our full 30 pierogi. So now we can turn to our garnish. I have four tablespoons of melted butter here over medium low heat. I'm gonna add one large onion that's been minced and a half teaspoon of salt. And we'll cook this until the onions are nicely caramelized. And this will take about 15 to 20 minutes. And now we can turn our attention to cooking the pierogi. All right, we have a large pot of boiling water here. We're gonna add one tablespoon of salt and we're gonna add half of our pierogi, so about 15 pierogi. And the reason why we're only adding half is because we don't wanna cool the water down too much. Now, a lot of recipes I've seen, they tell you the pierogi's done when they start to float. Is there any truth to that? Remember, we have to cook that dough all the way through, and we wanna make sure we heat that filling back up. Let them go for the full five minutes. Okay, Julia, the second batch is done. Ooh, that means it's eating time. Yep. So we can go right into the skillet with the caramelized onions with the first batch. In order to carry the onions a little bit further, we'll add a couple tablespoons of this cooking water. I was thinking the onions look like they need a little loosening up. Yeah, and they need to warm up a little bit too. So we're gonna hit them over medium low heat for just a couple of minutes. And we'll toss all the pierogi in that onion oh, mixture. Oh, goodness. That looks terrible. <laughs> My mouth is watering right now. <laughs> so right onto the platter. Oh. Let's get the rest of those onions. Oh yeah, maybe just a little more. Yeah, that looks good. Is that good? Well, my fork just went right through that dough. It's not like a rubbery lead sinker at all. Mmm, mmm, man. I don't think I've ever had a pierogi this good. You know, they're filling, but they're not gonna weigh you down. And that was kind of my, my measure of great pierogies when I was in Pittsburgh. Could I eat more than two or three without <laughs> feeling like I was gonna have to take a nap? <laughs> To make the ultimate potato and cheddar pierogi, start with rust potatoes and sharp cheddar cheese. Using a stand mixer, beat the two together until smooth, then spread the filling into a square baking dish and chill it until firm. To make a supple, easy to roll out dough, use bread, flour, and sour cream, along with some baking powder and egg. After rolling out the dough and cutting out three inch rounds, use one tablespoon of filling before giving it your own personalized crimp edge. To cook the pierogi, boil them in salted water for exactly five minutes, then toss with caramelized onions before serving. And there you have it, from Cook's Country, the best recipe for potato cheddar pierogi. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>